uh, thank you so much for for being with us in another pre-event of the 18 uh, International Docomomo Conference. And today I have the honor to present uh, Natasha Coselli. Uh, she is an architect from uh, Ljubljana. Uh, she did a PhD related with the architecture of post-war in, in, uh, in Slovenia. And uh, she wrote so many articles and, and books about, uh, I don't remember, the Danilo, Danilo first, Danilo first. Yeah. A wonderful book. And, and she wrote also a thesis on the um, architecture of the post-war in, in Slovenia. And she is teaching um, uh, at the undergraduate and, and PhD program of the University of Ljubljana. And Natasha was in charge of the... Uh, 15? 15, 16, 15. 15, yeah. 15, uh, 15 international conference uh, uh, was held in Ljubljana in the Kangyadev Dom. Uh, uh, it was a wonderful organization at that time. And we enjoyed very much uh, the, the environment of, of the Congress and of, of course of Ljubljana with, his, with Ljubljana and Slovenia, which has a wonderful modern architecture. Uh, thank you so much, Natasha, for being here. And I give you the microphone to go ahead with your presentation. We have some, some uh, questions probably at the end and uh, I encourage the audience to be to participate in the in the final uh, debate. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you very much, Horatio. It's a great pleasure to for me to be here. That thank you for the invitation. And um, um, I prepared a short twenty minutes presentation, uh, and uh, then we can discuss uh, the topic which is uh, in the beginning phase. Uh, um, I will start with some photos that were also presented in uh, the 15th International Docomomo Conference. So um, maybe I can share the screen. Okay. Oops. Oops. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. Um, the concrete fish in Tivoli Park was my first childhood contact with Laka's work. Can you hear me? Yes, very good. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Actually, this was one of my favorite places to play as a child. And this fish has been there for over 65 years by now. I took this photo in 2016 and used it for the cover of the 15th International Docomomo Conference in Tsankario Dom in Ljubljana in 2018. So or already six years or five and a half years ago. Laka making fish. So Laka created the fish in the late 1950s in Matko Curk's concrete workshop. Matko Curk was Plechnik's collaborator in concrete in most of Plechnik's buildings in Slovenia. The fish is influenced with Cobra movement, Henry Moore and Barbara Hepworth. It's a unique functional concrete sculpture which is an unforgettable memory of most of the children from Ljubljana. Inside the hollowed out fish body sculpture, there is just enough space to sit a couple of children and the feeling there is exceptional, almost like being in a small house or in a whale's belly. At the same time, it can be used to run through and slide out. It is static and dynamic at the same time a sculpture and a playground, an organic and functional piece of art in any direction. 
It's a brave monument of time and at the same time, timeless. It is at the same time architecture and sculpture, exactly the joints that Bauhaus philosophy was looking for in the first half of the 20th century. As such, it is a groundbreaking element in the history of Slovenian art and architecture and a very important part of our collective memory. It is interesting that Laka built her own studio, which she named Moj Dom, in translation, my home, on Veselova Street in Ljubljana, in the same year, 1977, that Cankarja Dom, in translation, Cankar's home, building site open in the immediate vicinity. Actually, the two houses are just more than 100 meters apart. Raunikar describes Tsankar Dom as follows, and the same words could be used for describing Laka's studio. Quote, classically counter-classical architecture that does away with the traditional space and replaces it with boundless space, space without rear and front, without up and down. There is no image or concept of any specific architectural vision, but excitement and sensation from inside going directly through the complex conflation of energy charged forms. It has three completely different facades. It is frontness without frontality and without perspective. Because the world is around us, not in front of us. Several views open from several directions simultaneously, in the same way that we look around in the street and everything constantly changes. Architecture is decentered returned to the natural cluster of random, connected with the reactions of the mundane and always different. From one line to another, what is created is living order of improvisation, which is learned ignorance, knowledge interspersed with not knowing. The end of quotation, so. This is another photo that I used for the cover of the conference. And this is the building site of Tsanka Dome from 1977. And this is the photo of Laka's studio I took in 2008. Both buildings have a lot in common, especially in terms of a structuralist approach to the treatment of space since in both cases, the classical understanding of perspective and facades breaks down into sequential views that give a more complex and multidimensional understanding of space and building elements. This brings a new dynamic to the understanding of architecture. In the case of Laka's living studio on a very small scale, and in the case of Raunikar's Tsankareo Dom, on a very large scale. In both structures, we can talk about growing space, where light comes from unexpected directions, zenitally, which contributes to greater dynamics of the perception of the architectural work and is in contrast to the rational, clear and strict Euclidean geometry of the architecture of early modernism. The studio, My Home, developed from a garden garage of her parents' house, which Laka first adapted into her working studio and later expanded into a living studio. She created an articulated space where the central staircase and the studio 
are illuminated by zenithal light, which simultaneously divides and connects the old part with the new extension. The building has two floors. The original part is made of reinforced concrete and is static, while the extension is made of unplastered modular concrete blocks and slender reinforced concrete columns, which are clad in wood. The roof covering is made of sheet metal. The interior spaces are dynamically structured and connected to the garden through glass surfaces. On the ground floor, there are entrance hall, kitchen, and living room. On the first floor, there is a studio about the garage, and next to it is a sleeping area with a terrace. The facade is dynamic towards the garden, but static on the border with other plots. This building was renovated in 2022. Before the last renovation, a sculpture and an oval pond were located on the lawn in front of the studio. So you can see this here. Now I will show some photos from the 80s. Um, taken by her relative Tomi Kalan um, of some of exterior and some of uh, this is can you see Laka? Hello? Can you see Laka? Yeah? Yes. Yes, okay. Um she was a chain smoker, so she's smoking here behind her sculpture. Um, some interior uh, with Laka at, in her studio. And here is her family. Her full name was Vladimira Bratush Laka, and she was born to a well-off family in 1923. Her father was owner of a cork products factory, Plutal, in Ljubljana. And she was the youngest of three daughters. So she was a kind of a family a rebel. Uh, she's on your left hand side and she doesn't look to uh, the camera. She started to study simultaneously architecture at Professor Joža Plečnik and sculpture with Professor Franciszek Smerdu in 1942 during the war and finished both studies in 1950. In her fourth year of studies, she made Plečnik's portrait sculpture. So you can see here in the small picture, Plechnik and his students during the war, uh, the school was uh, closed and the students uh, were coming to Plechnik's house and that's where the photo was taken. So this is Laka's portrait, uh, Plechnik's portrait. Um, she made in the fourth year of studies. And some years later, she also made Tone Bittens sculpture, and Tone Bittens was Plechnik's last assistant. Both Bittens and Laka were Plechnik's collaborators at the Križanke complex, which is Joža Plechnik's last work. Both portrait sculptures, that of Plechnik and of Bittens, are positioned in Križanke, but as you can see, there is still an empty space there on the right-hand side calling for another portrait sculpture. Hello? Križanke complex is now owned by Ljubljana Festival. There is also a secondary school of design inside the Križanke complex. And during the years 1967-1981, Laka was teaching three-dimensional art in this school in Križanke. In the early 1950s, Laka was Raunikar's collaborator 
at Ram Rap, Kampur Memorial Cemetery, Island Rap in Croatia. And you can see her on this picture sitting in the middle. And you can see Edward Rauniker on the right hand side. And two of Rauniker's students, Marco Schleimer behind Rauniker, and um, another student uh, from Maribor. This is the plan of Rap Memorial Cemetery and the entrance where uh, the copper door where Laka was a collaborator are placed. So it's on the left hand side. This is the detail of this entrance, which is a really fine copper um, artwork. Essentially, this work is the poetics of the disintegration of a stone wall as a symbolic border between life and death, woven into the tradition of stone land boundaries of the coast. In 1955, she co-authored another monument in Skoflica, and at the same year, she was awarded Diplôme d'honneur Cannes in Académie Internationale de la Ceramique in France. So these are photos from, also taken from late 80s, Laka at work. Uh, in 1987, she had a retrospective exhibition. This is another photo of her studio with zenithal light, a poster from her 87 exhibition, and the cover of the catalog uh, in Richard Jakopic gallery. Uh, in 2023, so last year, we celebrated Laka's 100th anniversary and also 30 years of Edward Trauniker's death. So I decided um, to dedicate the last year's class at the Faculty of Architecture to the work of Laka and Edvard Traunikar. And here I would like to show you some examples of the student work. They had to choose one work by Laka and one detail of Edvard Traunikar, and they had to make a paper composition in golden section Similarly, as in Edward Trauniker's B Wink School, which was active from 1960 to 1962. And they then they also did some work in clay and a brick cladding um, exercise. So uh, they had uh, lectures, but uh, then they did some research and also practical work in material. We have been doing the brick cladding exercise with my students each year since 2005. When I asked our school model master to make Samba wooden bricks in the same module as Ferrantovar bricks are made, but a bit smaller. So each year students repeat one corner and one brick pattern by Raunikar and then made their own brick compositions in wooden bricks. Uh, well, Laka passed away in 2006. And here I would like to share as a Pieta some photos of her studio taken very soon after her death, uh, which are kindly shared by Bogo Zupancic, Nadia Zgunik, and Aida Balderman. So I will not talk much, but just share these photos. It was uh, winter time. Entrance door. Living room with exposed concrete um, modules and a copper lamp, another lamp. main staircase. Mm. 
this is self portrait in ceramics her studio you can see here snow on uh, the zenithal lights uh, which makes the whole studio much darker than usual Um, she was very keen on collecting fossils. So here are some uh, fossil reminiscences. And also uh, she was experimenting in clay, uh, making different brick uh, size and brick shape. So you can see here very small examples of bricks under the sculpture. So she was extremely innovative, extremely creative, um, and a little rebel in in uh, Slovenian art scene. There are paper sacks in clay, Plechnik sculpture. This is Tone Bittens, I mentioned earlier, portrait. This is the fish, a little uh, gyps, gypsum model that she made before starting the real concrete fish. And you can see here there is there was eye originally that is now missing. So uh, it was not realized. It was just in the model. And here are some examples by Laka in copper. And um, I visited uh, the family um, last year and they showed me th those copper models, which are very small and very fine. Because this year in 2024, uh, our focus is again in Laka and Raunikar's work but material is copper. So we are now studying with students copper. What can we do and what did they do in copper? Um, so last, last week we climbed the towers. Uh, the top of the towers are also covered in uh, copper. Um, if you know Plechnik uh, Zacher House in Vienna, it's kind of a reminiscent, a Raunica uh, reminiscence to that. And um, it's, it's uh, really fantastic because the detail, the copper details are so refined. Um, so it feels like uh, the towers have a copper crown. Um, So now we are in the process of uh, studying this and making, in the end, uh, students will make their own copper work. Um, so to conclude, in the work of the architect and the sculptor Vladimira Bratuslaka and the architect and planner Edvard Traunikar, we can recognize the key development phases of Slovenian structuralism. They are represented by the design of the entrance door in Kampor Cemetery on Rab Island on the top left photo. Um, in the paper exercises in Raunikar's B-Way uh, teaching method, 
bottom left. In Ferrant Award um, complex, here you can see on your right hand side the detail of Ferrant Award brick facades pattern, the fish in Tivoli Park, and of course, and most important, in Laka's uh, living studio, Moj Dom, and in Tsankarjo Dom as the pinnacle of Slovenian structuralism. These are all examples of the architecture with a very strong artistic power. The development in sculpture of the 20th century went from figurative to abstraction, and this also happened in the field of architecture. Pre-war classically built space of Plechnik's architecture, named by Raunikar flexible classicism, was replaced by the dynamics of authentic modernism in post-war time of Slovenian structuralism. Authenticity, experiment, synthesis, and abstraction are key concepts in defining these artworks. So I uh, think uh, today is really uh, very important to stress the artistic power of architecture, because uh, at least here in Slovenia, uh, it's neglected. It's absolutely neglected. Uh, it's We just uh, talk about money and about the politics in architecture. But I think that uh, the, the core of architecture is creative power, artistic power. So that's why I thought it's really important to stress this today. And I would like to finish with this photo again in Križanke, Plečnik's Križanke, which is uh, Plečnik's last work. And you can see here in the front that there is a void. And this void just calls for an appropriate and respectful tribute to the woman, architect, and sculptor, who was an invaluable creator of Slovenian structuralism. Thank you. Thank you, Natasha. It was very revealing, may I say. <laughs> really a uh, fantastic uh, uh, lecture on this, uh, what can I say, uh, um, this uh, excellent uh, architecture. I, I was completely impressed with the, with the plans of the little house. It's really amazing how she did a lot with, with less than few uh, walls. You know, it's really really fantastic thank you so much um i think uh, uh, that we have some uh some questions uh probably from from our audience uh, i have some i can i can start with with one or two um uh, the first is did she introduce the sculpture in in her own uh um in her own architecture or, or just did architecture like uh, in a sculptural way? Yes, I think it's both because it's it was all simultaneously for her. She studied both uh, simultaneously um, uh, sculpture and architecture and um, she lectured three-dimensional art. So her her sculpture was always almost always three dimensional um because sculpture is three dimensional but with those um holes uh when you make a space inside the sculpture and when you uh, uh make this sculpture for children so they can touch they can run they can um be happy there i think this is um architecture i mean it's it's I, I because we put uh, Dokomomo Slovenia put her house in the selection of uh, 100 most important Slovenian uh, architecture of nine from 19 to 1980 but we didn't put the fish 
So maybe it was a mistake. I don't know. Um, but she was one of the two, the only two women presented in this selection. Um, I don't know. Maybe in next selection we we should have, should put the the fish also. <laughs> well, I, um, I have another, but I I, I can introduce the we we are launching next week the international educational initiative of on modern heritage, which uh, uh, it's related to the work every. Docomomo member are doing with the students in different in different faculties. So you can uh, go ahead presenting one or two or five posters, and one should be the the fish. Uh, very wow! Uh, uh, yes, it, it's really amazing the fish, or also the the work your students your students are doing uh, at this moment. Uh, the initiative is for all the people who are doing something related this year uh, with the, with the uh, modern heritage. So I, I invite you to do it. Uh, okay. I have another, another question. It's not really very clear because I, I, I'm just thinking on it, but it's really amazing the way she did this, and, and, you, and you said that, uh, this kind of... Uh, dynamic uh, entrance to the buildings, just moving uh, uh, a wall, not to, to get uh, the, the entrance completely front of the people. So the people must go around and then came in to the building in the case of, of her house is really clear. And in, also it is clear in the, in the Kankare because when you are going through the space in between these two towers, uh, you must uh, go turn around to get in the the Kankare. It's really it's really interesting because it also a way to have an interpretation related with this kind of structuralist in not only in the in the shape but also in the in the way you can uh, experience the space. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's, it's a, a very well observed. <laughs> yes, thank you. This is really uh, interesting. So we can go ahead with some questions. Carolina, you as uh, Lina's project uh, and, the, and the women. In, I, I in think you have some First, I think you have some questions in the chat. Oh, I, I, I prefer because they were first than me. Okay, but yes, yes. Nice to course. see you, Natasha. Beautiful nice picture. Michel Reyes is, it is interesting how Laca integrates sculpture and architecture in the small details. Has this influenced contemporary Slovenian architecture in any way? Um, yeah, maybe when, because she was teaching uh, uh, at the uh, secondary school of design in Križanke uh, for quite a long, uh, from 1967 to 1981. So it's quite a long period. So she did influence uh, her uh, pupils in secondary school. But uh, today she she's almost forgotten. Um, it's, uh, it's really a shame uh, because... Uh, it, uh, I think that neither uh, architectural students, neither uh, 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 art students uh, know her uh, work uh, because uh, uh, it was a real, it's a, it's a, it's a sad story because in 2008, when I visited the house, um, my professor Vladimir Bratsomusic and I, uh, we wrote a, a letter to Ljubljana municipality if they could uh, buy her studio and open it uh, to public um, because it, it's, it was really uh, very interesting, but really tiny. It, it's so tiny, it's, it's less than uh, maybe 80 square meters. It's, it's really like, 
is hidden inside the bushes. Um, and in 2000, uh, during the, the COVID period, uh, the house was sold. And uh, now it's closed for public. So last year we asked uh, for permission to visit it, but it was everything was quiet. So there was no way to enter the building. And um, it's this is the story. So uh, it's very sad the story. But now with uh, this active activation of our students last year and this year, maybe they will spread uh, the information. Um, and maybe some other uh, artists and architects will do the same. So I hope a monographic book and some um, uh, portrait sculpture will will appear somewhere soon because uh, it was centenary last year and she really deserves it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh... Rosario Bernstein said, I found really interesting that you showed us some artwork and cases from Laka, kind of mixed sculpture, a dynamic and organic sculpture with modern architecture, modular, modular and articulated. All of this in a context in which women were in some way shadowed by the image of the most important male architects around the world. How do you think her work influenced and repercuted in the construction of modern movement in Slovenia? Um, well, I think it was through Plechnik and through Raunikar's work uh, with uh, whom she collaborated. So people uh, do know Raunikar, they do know Plechnik, uh, even they uh, don't know so well Laka, uh she's she was and she has been somehow presented all these years in their work but not her name so this is important now to to stress and to focus on the creative power of this woman and to to show that this she, she was not just some help helper of Raunika and of Plechnik but she had a very strong uh, personality and her own creative power was really so strong that uh, we would like to present it now as uh, it should be. Um, uh, I mean, she had in 1987, she had a retrospective a monographic exhibition and she had hundreds of uh, other exhibitions uh, and um, she got awards but um, today, I mean, she didn't have children. Uh, she didn't um, have uh, her husband pass passed away. So it's it's a very subtle theme uh, how to uh, uh, to present to the world uh, internationally and locally. Um, so what I'm doing now to the international uh, audience is uh, probably the same uh, unwilling uh, to the local Slovenian audience. So um, I hope in a year or two, uh, she will be presented uh, as she deserves. Uh, Rosario said, thank you, Natasha. And Felipe Basiliu uh, said, uh, was there some kind of interaction between the Bauhaus and Laka's work? Did she experiment in other type of design apart from sculpture and architecture? Uh, yeah, she experimented in many fields. Um, and um, uh, Bauhaus was the this uh, key idea to connect uh, the uh, arts and crafts uh, but on the rationalist way and uh, this post-war uh, structuralist uh, which is Laka also the presenter uh, they wanted to uh, somehow um, include uh, like fossils and history 
um, into their uh, art and architecture. Um, so we can see in Raunikar's architecture, uh, lots of uh, references um, uh, to the um, archaeological excavations, for example. And uh, in Laka's own studio, lots of fossil stones that she found on her walk and um, lots of flowers. Uh, so um, it's, it's uh, not an exact art and architecture uh, as an, and rational uh, in the uh, the same uh, sense as Bauhaus, uh, it's uh, more like Team Ten uh, or a brutalist. Uh, these post-war critics of the Bauhaus, but with the roots in this key idea of the Bauhaus, which is connecting the arts and crafts. Uh. Yes. So now, Carolina. Okay. Yes, but. I'm in the same direction that the question about if uh, the work have some protection uh, or monument. Yeah, because two, two or three things. <laughs> the protection, if uh, there are some archives, archive, or where is the custody of all her uh, work? And uh, I ask you, this because you know everyone knows uh, is more difficult the research and the protection and the conservation about uh, the guman uh, architects and designers because uh, it's the work is really uh, not well known so this is my question and yes. i ask you this because here we find some <laughs> uh, yeah like some strategy about to promote some initiatives for the protection or as you also promote the Italia Fulvia Villa or some Goman architects buildings uh, in Uruguay also and or maybe another initiatives uh, like they put the name of some streets so you have always there the name <laughs> is one possibility and the archives these two yeah. things Yes, uh, thank you, Carolina. Um, the good uh, thing is that uh, Bogu Zupancic from Mao Museum, uh, Museum of Architecture in Ljubljana, was there um, immediately, so uh, in the same year when she died. And um, so Mao keeps something, um, some archive, and uh, some of the sculptures are with... Uh, to Mikalan, he, uh, her relative, in their own house. Um, and um, National Library uh, keeps all the catalogs and keeps all the articles. Uh, the problem is this house, the, the my, uh, my, my dom, my uh, home, uh, because it's it's closed and uh, it's it's just no we can't enter there is no information um, open house Slovenia tried also to uh, present it last year but there was no way uh, so the real lost is the studio the house uh, and uh, the material is somehow uh, restored and uh, can be uh, uh, is available in the Mao Museum. So this is a good a good part of the story. And uh, her will was uh, to present the sculptures in a gallery um, as a permanent permanent exhibition. So this is not realized yet. So uh, together with uh, some art historians, we will try to uh, to presents uh, all the sculptures to the audience in one place. Uh, so this will be uh, quite a big uh, work and uh, a mon monographic book also. Uh, so um, there, are, there are pluses and there are minuses as usual. Um, well, the, the have... Thank you, sorry. Horacio, I forgot oh. to mention two things. The in Chile, the Dora Riddle Prize was very good because you have a prize with the name of the architect. And in uh, Spain, the uh, 
Lily Reich Fellowship. So every year <laughs> you keep in your mind this. Uh, um, there's another question on, from Clara Lyon. Is there a protection figure like modern monument or similar in Laka's house? Uh, is there a program to conserve her work and give her recognition? You mentioned it. Okay, you, you have just answered some part of the question, but yeah. if it is the uh, protection figure uh, on Laka's house, it's, I think it's, a, it's a interesting to... Uh, yes, uh, it, was list, it, it was listed in Dokomomo, but uh, in the Heritage Society, I don't know uh, how is it. Uh, so... Uh, it's, it's probably listed as a, a monument of local importance uh, because when it was renovated now in 2022, uh, uh, appearance from the outside is that they uh, were quite respectful uh, with the renovation, but uh, we can't enter the inside. So, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, another one from Florencia Leon. How can the design of the house and its integration with the sculpture help in energy consumption and create a more sustainable work? Specifically, I'm interested in understanding the role of light and materiality that like a house embodies. Yes, this is a real lo uh, loss. I mean, because when they moved out all the sculptures, and now today there is a kind of computer company there. Uh, it's an opposite uh, work. Uh, so um, even if they will present all these sculptures somewhere uh, somewhere else in a gallery, it will not be the same thing. I like this question very much because they did with Plechnik the same. Um, he, uh, on the... Um, Star Square uh, in, uh, in Kungresny Square in the center of Ljubljana, there was a very tiny uh, shop um, designed by Plechnik uh, to expose uh, students' work and to sell students' work. It was called Letzteria. But then they moved it uh, to the museum and it lost, you can see it now in the museum, but uh, it lost the main point. Uh, so now you can buy uh, some clothes uh, there in the original shop, but uh, the the interior, Plechnik's interior of Letzteria was moved to the museum and um, the essence is lost. I mean, you can see the object, uh, different objects, uh, but the essence of the original space is lost and this is also the situation with the house because the best thing would be to see the sculpture in, inside the house uh, I mean it, it, it's like uh, doubling the energy and the information uh, the smell everything uh, but now we can just see look at the house from the street not enter and we will hopefully see the exhibition somewhere uh, and hopefully have a book but it's not the same thing um, the, the best thing would be to see the bear of soap there that Laka used you know everything that was hers but is lost this is lost forever okay there's another question, comments. Uh, hi, good afternoon, Natasha. Um, hi. I have a couple of questions. Um, the first is that recently you mentioned the house has been locked out to the public. Yes. But in some of the pictures you shared with us in the late presentation, uh, you could notice some objects like toothpaste, some contemporary books. Was the house was Laka's house being used as a residence as of the past or something of that style? And what type of conservation has been made to the houses if the uh, if it, if it has been locked out to the public? Yeah, uh, those those photos were taken in two thousand six when she passed away. Oh. So the situation was like when she used it. 
and uh, from 2006 until it was sold, uh, uh, somebody lived there, um, somebody who looked after her when she was dying. And um, I was there in 2008, but it was still very well pre uh, preserved. Uh, but when it was sold during the COVID, uh, it it was emptied and, uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, it is listed, but it's not uh, preserved as a monument of national importance. It's, it's even not a, man, a monument of local importance. It is just listed in Dokomomo selection. And uh, in heritage, uh, uh, office they did uh, i think they did quite uh, some steps towards uh, the conservation of the building of the architecture but um, it, it's missing the the whole story is missing with removing uh, the sculptures and flowers and uh, the things that laka used uh, i just mentioned this in previous answer so um um you are referring to the pictures from 2006 you know yeah so it's it's quite a long long ago <laughs> yeah i imagine and my second question was regarding the kanker jepdam and laka's house they're both really similar in their approach uh, perhaps one in a big scale and the other in a small scale yeah. Uh, so uh, I can imagine there can be some parallels drawn uh, between these two works, considering their shared context in Ljubljana. Yes, uh, there are. I mean, you can describe both houses with uh, these uh, Raunikar's words uh, because they were friends. Uh, Raunikar and uh, Laka were friends and collaborators, not just in Rab Cemetery, but in many others. Uh, so they had uh, discussions about art and architecture and probably shared quite similar taste uh, and knowledge. Um, probably you didn't know, uh, but um, before Raunikar started to lecture at the Faculty of Architecture in 1946, he was lecturing art history in the um, Art Academy, uh, so it uh, he he was very uh, keen on studying um, art history as well, not just architecture, and uh, he um, had a great knowledge also about art history. Um, so I think the two uh, were on the same wavelength, uh, discussing the theory, the history. Um, so um, I I can tell more. Okay. Thank you very much, Natasha. Thank you. Okay. Anyone? No. No. Uh, thank you so much, Natasha, for being with us in, at this pre-event of the 18th International Docomomo Conference. As you can see, we have a lot of, of uh, interest on this uh, kind of events, and we thank you so much for your, uh, for your uh, commitment with us to, to do this, uh, this lecture today. And uh, I hope to see you on, in December here in Santiago and uh, uh, have a good uh, conference uh, at that time. So yes. thank you so much again. Uh, thank you, Natasha. Uh, great uh, to have you here with us and um, a, a great regards to all the people from uh, of Dokumomo, Slovenia. Thank you very much, Horatio, and I wish you a wonderful conference. Thank and so um, I would like to say to send my best regards to Carolina because we share a very, very um, uh, special story, uh, which was revealed when I was looking for Laka's uh, archive in my email. So um, I hope we can 
uh, somehow reveal this story to the audience in the future. Okay. Thank you. Uh, see you soon. See you. Bye. Bye. Okay, but